Hello and welcome to Outside In. My name is Steven and today we are going to be looking at a really interesting video switcher. It's called the Feel World Live Pro L1. The main reason for this video, I couldn't get it to connect to my computer. I forgot how many hours now I've spent, three or four days. I even contacted customer support at Fuel World. The problem was on my end, and I'm just about to get into that. I was trying to get this connected to my computer directly per one of the videos that I watched on how to connect this. If you're having the same issue with this device and you cannot get it to connect to your computer and you are running Windows 7. Now, I don't know if Windows 10 will do it because I haven't used Windows 10. A lot of the people that are complaining is very recent. So most people are running Windows 10 now. I'm gonna show you how I finally got it to work and it was not a direct connection. USB video to go through to my computer. Now we're gonna talk about getting it connected to the computer. First thing, you need to go to network and sharing. Just click on it. You need to have a local area connection. Let's get into how you actually get this connected to your computer. Number one, don't connect this directly to the computer. That's where I, and I believe many, many other people have had their problem. And the reason a lot of people are saying that this is worthless, piece of junk, it doesn't work, it can't, you can't connect it, they're missing something that they should have done that I missed. I missed it myself, I missed it myself. You need a router to get this to work. Please don't get one of those modems that looks like a router. I think somebody said you can use a modem slash router, but the best thing to do is just get a router. Don't confuse it with a switcher either because I also have a switcher. And what a switcher does is it, it's just like an add-on. It gives you more connections but you actually need the router itself. I'm not saying you need to use a Netgear. That's what I've always used. I just love the Netgear routers. Let's just take a deep breath. It's gonna come through to a solution. That's why I created this video. So let's get to it. Now we're going to, I made this little thing up in my word program. IP addresses contain four sets of numbers that are separated by periods or dots, however you wanna say it. And an example of that would be, I just put in these numbers 111.222.333.444. Now these little brackets, I just did that to separate the numbers. The IP address is four sets of numbers and the, each number has three digits in it. But now you'll see down here, I don't have three digits here. Why is that? Because whenever you put zero, zero before the number, it takes those out automatically, just puts the one because that's the number. The reason I've highlighted these is because they have a meaning. When you set up Live Pro with your computer, you have to set it up in a network, okay? Don't use the computer directly though, like I've already explained. Get yourself a router, and this pretty much should be the same for all routers that you get. The only difference is gonna be the IP address that the router uses, okay? Now Netgear always uses 192.168.1.1. That's what the IP address is. The first three sets of numbers, they must be the same in each device and the Xtool application. The first three groups of numbers have to be identical all the way across the board. Now the reason that these four are highlighted on this one, think of the switcher and the program X tool that you will have to download to control it. These both are acting as one device. This X tool application is the interface for the Live Pro to be able to upgrade the firmware. Okay, so these both have to be the same because they're one unit. And now we will go to my Netgear Genie program. Okay, go down here to the network map. This is your whole network now. This is my whole network. The router has successfully connected to the PC, gave it an IP address, successfully connected to my switcher and gave it also an IP address. First three numbers, one nine, the router did this. I didn't do this. The router has the IP address 192.168.1. The switcher has 192.168.1. They all three have the first three numbers identical. The only thing that's different about each device is the fourth number. That is what is different. That's what differentiates your device from each other. Like I said, the reason these are both the same is because this is all one unit right here. So that's why these both, both of these, all four have to be exactly the same. So once you, once all this is done, the Netgear router will set all the IP addresses up correctly to get it to work. The only thing you have to do now, you take this IP address, 192.168.1.3, that's on here, but yours is gonna be different, of course, when you get yours connected. What you need to remember is the IP address is what you have to input into the Xtool application, okay? 
you'll open up Xtool. This is the latest version of Xtool as of March 2022. Go to your connections. Now, this won't be here when you first install the program. It'll be like this. Just put a checkbox into Netcom. You want to make sure that this IP address, 192.168.1.3, is exactly the same as your router itself. 192.168.1.3. Okay. And you just want to make sure, so just come back here a couple times if you have to, just to confirm that those numbers are exactly the same. When she was doing it on her program, whenever she would click confirm, it would do that. IP address set, click up confirm, and then this box would go away. This was another thing that was confusing me because this box did not go away. I always come back to this screen, which I think is a bit confusing for people. So they need to make that dialog box go away when everything is working correctly. All you have to do to get out of this is just click the cancel button you're back at the screen but you'll notice something now that you didn't notice before on here the connection status used to be red for me all the time but then i noticed oh no wait a minute that's green now that means it is connected also something i noticed is that this bar up here had nothing in it it was like this it was empty it was empty all the way across this button here i would click on it to choose a file and then it would pop up a, a, a message saying please connect the device once everything is right, it will automatically know where to go to get that upgrade file on your computer. Because this new version of Xtool, when it's installed, it puts the update version that you need inside the, the installation directory. So it goes there automatically. And now you just have to click the upgrade button. Okay, when you do that, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to mess anything up because I've already upgraded it. Once you click the upgrade button to finalize and confirm you want to do the update. Once once you start the upgrade, then this little bar here will start going across the screen to indicate how close it's being to being done. Please do not do anything with your computer system. You've spent hours, maybe like me, you've spent days. You don't want to take any chances on messing anything up. So just walk away, get yourself a cup of coffee let it do its thing let me show you something else you're going to see on this screen is going to go black a couple different times i believe um, updating firmware that is also good indication that everything is going as planned and it the computer is talking to this device and this device is talking to the computer and they're getting everything updated so just let it finish let it finish doing its thing the other issue that I had is the USB getting the video signal out to my computer. After we got the device actually connected, I was so excited. Then I installed OBS because that's what everybody kept recommending use for this and it does work beautifully. And I added the source to the scene, but yet it was just a black screen. I contacted Sean. He was telling me that the problem that I was having now was similar to a lot of other people, same issue that they were having. He said, you're running Windows 7, aren't you? <laughs> and I said, yes. And he said, um, I know a driver that you need to get your computer to allow the video signal to come through. Got that and I installed it and immediately everything started working. The video started coming through. I did a test recording. I just am so excited to finally get this thing working and i'm excited and happy that i'm able to put this video out there with using this switcher if you had to take this out with you on the road you can throw all this gear into a the big briefcase take it with you be in the motel room while you're waiting on somebody or waiting family and friends you can shoot a whole video if you need to sitting in your motel room using this setup i just want to say i'm so grateful to god for allowing me to be able to do this now finally after all these years to be able to create a channel to bring some help to people i know what it's like to be frustrated what it's like for things to not go right this i paid for i was not given this device for free to review it i just wanted to make this video so it could help others that are going through and have went through what i have went through they're getting ready to send it back to feel world Please, I beg you, do not do that. Set yourself up in that work. Anyone who's on the fence about getting this because of people getting mad and disgusted and frustrated and just throw in the towel and quit, I'm not a quitter. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one problem that I have. I'm not a quitter. I just keep hacking away and hacking away till I finally get it. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really, truly pray and hope that you've got something out of this. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Find someone who needs to laugh. Make it happen. God bless.